Hello, it is Bible Scribe. Welcome back. I wanted to do a short video today on the 5,500 year prophecy that God gave Adam about when the Redeemer would come. There's actually a lot of references for this, and I was asked by a viewer, can you please just go through all the references that you have on the 5,500 year prophecy? So we're going to do that in this video rather quickly, just so you can see all the different ones, because you know, oftentimes I have debates with people over, over this idea that uh, either the timeline is correct for 5,500 years to, to Christ from Adam, or other items about the chronology of when Christ came and what happened. And it's really funny to me that I still have to debate this with people because there's so many references to this. I think you'll be surprised when we go through these. So let's get to it. So we're going to go through this page of research material that I've put together, the 5,500 year prophecy from Adam to Christ. Where we're going to start is with the Septuagint. I think you can see that on my screen. The, the chronology that the Septuagint gives accounts for around 5,500 years from Adam to Jesus Christ, just by going by the chronology. So for instance, you may remember in the book of Genesis, there's a chronology of the patriarchs. And in other books of the Old Testament, there are different chronologies where it says how old a certain person was when they begat their sons and then they died. And it, so what scholars have done is go through the Bible and add those up to see what the time frame was between Adam and Christ. Well, if you do that in the Masoretic text, which many people use, it's the basis of many of our modern translations, but it's a very late translation of the Hebrew Scriptures. If you use that Masoretic text, you come up with about 4,400 years from Adam to Christ. However, we found that an older version of the Bible called the Septuagint is more accurate in terms of this prophecy. The 5,500 years is mirrored perfectly in the genealogies in the Septuagint. And you can see here on this chart, for instance, some of the differences. So you can see that this chart actually compares the Masoretic text in the first section to the Samaritan texts, then the Septuagint text in the third column. And we're not going to worry about the Samaritan text. We're mainly interested in the Masoretic versus the Septuagint. But you can see how, for instance, Seth it says he was born 130 years after Adam, but the Septuagint shows that he was born 230 years after Adam. And you can see as it goes down, we'll jump down to, for instance, Enoch, 622 years in the Masoretic verses, 1,122 years from Adam in the Septuagint. You see how these timelines diverge heavily. But when you add up all these genealogies from the Septuagint, again, it matches the 5,500 years of the prophecy that we're going to be talking about through the rest of this video. So one of the writings that gives us kind of a basis for understanding this prophecy is the Gospel of Nicodemus. It's an early Christian writing that was uh, written supposedly in either the first or second century after Christ. And so it says here in chapter 3, verse 1 of the Acts of Pilate, part 2, Descent into Hell. It says, And I say unto you, Seth, vex not yourself with tears, praying and entreating for the oil of the tree of mercy, that thou mayest anoint thy father Adam for the pain of his body. For thou wilt not be able to receive it, except in the last days and times, when five thousand five hundred years are accomplished. Then shall the most beloved Son of God come upon the earth to raise up the body of Adam and the bodies of the dead, and he shall come and be baptized in the Jordan. It also says in chapter 12, verse 1, starting about here, it says, The God of Israel which said unto Moses, Make thee an ark of the covenant in the length two cubits and a half, and the breadth one cubit and a half, and in height one cubit and a half. For by these five cubits and a half, we have understood and known the fashion of the Ark of the Old Covenant. Five cubits and a half was the dimensions total of the Ark of the Covenant. 
And it says, For that in that five thousand and a half thousand years Jesus Christ should come in the ark of his body. And we have found that he is the God of Israel, even the Son of God. So that gives you the picture very clearly that in the Gospel of Nicodemus, a very early Christian writing, the early Christians believed in and knew about, of course, this 5,500-year prophecy that God had given that would be between the time of Adam and the time of Jesus Christ. Now when we come down to the Bible, we notice that the Ark of the Covenant does have the dimensions that were described in the Gospel of Nicodemus. Exodus 25, verse 10, They shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length, and a cubit and a half the breadth, and a cubit and a half the height. Well, if you add those up together, they end up to be five and a half cubits, which would mirror the prophecy exactly. Now, in a pseudepigraphal writing called the Book of Adam, in chapter 13, verse 3, 4, and 5, we see this. This is not to be right now, but in the future times when 5,000 years will be completed. Then at the five and a half thousand year, the beloved Son of God, Christ, will come upon the earth to resurrect Adam's body from his fall because of the transgression of the commands. Then we see also in the first book of Adam and Eve, a different pseudepigraphal work, in chapter 3, verse 1 and following, that God said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years, and you and your descendants shall live and walk in them until the days and years are fulfilled when I shall send the word, the logos, meaning Christ, that created you and against which you have transgressed, the word that made you come out of the garden and that raised you when you were fallen. Yes, the word that will again save you when the five and a half days are fulfilled. But when Adam heard these words from God, and of the great five and a half days, he did not understand the meaning. For Adam was thinking there would only be five and a half days for him until the end of the world. And Adam cried and prayed to God to explain it to him. Then God, in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and likeness, explained to him that these were five thousand and five hundred years, and how one would then come and save him and his descendants. So you may ask yourself why Adam was confused, why he first thought it was five and a half days, and then God corrected him and said, no, it's 5,500 years. Well, the reason is that the, the text, the first book of Adam and Eve, is said by scholars to, to be from an original Hebrew source. They pretty much know from the way it reads in the original languages that they found it, that it came from a Hebrew source. Well, in Hebrew, the word that is translated day here is, is the Hebrew word yom. And the word yom simply means a time period. It can mean day, but it can often mean other things. As you can see below, this list right here is a list of different ways that the New American Standard Bible, which by the way, I think is a very good translation of the original languages in most cases, it shows all the different ways that they translated this word yom from Hebrew. So for instance, you do see the word day, which was, it was translated as day many, many times, the very common usage. However, it also is translated as age, always, continually, evening, forever, full year, and on and on. You see there's many different translations of this word because it's a very ambiguous word. So it makes sense that when God originally told Adam, well, it's going to be five and a half yom, and then Christ will redeem you. He didn't understand at first. He didn't know exactly what kind of time periods God was talking about. So God clarified. And in the original Hebrew of this writing, that would have made complete sense to a reader. But for our English translations now, it doesn't help us very much. So we do need to understand the original languages just a bit. Now also in chapter 21 of the first book of Adam and Eve, it says, But the merciful God who looks over his creatures looked at Adam and Eve as they lay dead and sent his word, Christ, to them and raised them and said to Adam, O Adam, all this misery which you have brought 
on yourself will have no effect against my rule, neither will it alter the covenant of the 5,500 years. Then again, it mentions this 5,500 years in chapter 38. It says, After these things the word of God, meaning Christ, came to Adam and said to him, O Adam, as to the fruit on the tree of life that you have asked for, I will not give it to you now, but only when the 5,500 years are fulfilled. At that time I will give you fruit from the tree of life, and you will eat and you will live forever, you and Eve and your righteous descendants. Then there's a writing called the second book of Adam and Eve, and in that writing there are a couple references to the 5,500 years. For instance, in chapter 19, verse 1, it says, Then God revealed to him again the promise he had made to Adam. He explained to him the 5,500 years and revealed unto him the mystery of his coming upon the earth. Then in chapter 12, and God accepted his offering and sent his blessing upon him and his children. And then God made a promise to Seth, saying, At the end of the great five days and a half, again, the five and a half yom in Hebrew, concerning which I have made a promise to thee and thy father, I will send my word, the Logos, the Christ, and save thee and thy seed. In a pseudepigraphal writing called the Discourse on Abaddon, or the Discourse of Abaddon, in chapter 16, verse 1, it says this, And when the five and a half thousand years are fulfilled, I will send my beloved son into the world, and he shall abide in a virgin womb. Her name shall be Mary. Now, Flavius Josephus, a historian, a Jewish historian from the first century, wrote this in his chronology called The Antiquities of the Jews. In book one, preface, paragraph three, he says, our sacred books, they indeed contain in them the history of 5,000 years, in which time happened many strange accidents. Now, the reason it says 5,000 years here, of course, is because the writings of the Old Testament and the Jewish nation mainly ceased about 400 years before Christ. And so the sacred books he's referring to would be what we call our Old Testament, uh, along with some other writings, but mainly the Old Testament writings. So the 5,000 years appropriately speaks to the same chronology as the 5,500 years between Adam and Christ. Also in book 1, verse 1, he says, Those antiquities contain the history of 5,000 years and are taken out of our sacred books but are translated by me into the Greek tongue. Now let's talk about some of the earlier church writings that mention the 5,500 years, or in another way, may also confirm the chronology of the 5,500 years. So the epistle of Barnabas in chapter 15, and this was written about 70 to 90 AD, says, He finished in six days. This implies that the Lord will finish all things in 6,000 years, for a day is with him a thousand years. And he himself testifies, saying, In six days... That is, in 6,000 years, all things will be finished. So what you're going to find as we read through a few of these different early Christian authors is that they all were talking about the end of the 6,000 years because of the prophecies. They knew that Christ had come in the 5,500 year range. And so now they were looking forward to the end of the 6,000 years to see what would be happening at that time. In the early Christian writing, the Gospel of Bartholomew, in chapter 1, verse 17, it says this, And Hades said, Which of the prophets is it? Show me, is it Enoch the scribe of righteousness? But God hath not allowed him to come down upon the earth before the end of the 6,000 years. So you can see from this passage that the 6,000 years, again, is a recognized time frame that all of these Christian writers were looking forward to. Irenaeus, in about 120 to 180 AD, said this, The Lord therefore recapitulating in himself this day underwent his sufferings upon the day preceding the Sabbath, that is, the sixth day of creation, on which day man was created, thus granting him a second creation by means of his passion, which is that Adam to the thousandth year. Christ was born as the second Adam, and he was done so in the sixth day of creation, 
to the thousandth year. So in the sixth thousand years is when Christ came, according to the prophecies in fulfillment of them. Hippolytus of Rome lived from 170 AD to 236 AD, and in his writing on Daniel, section 2, verse 4, says this, For as the times are noted from the foundation of the world and reckoned from Adam, they set clearly before us the matter with which our inquiry deals. For the first appearance of our Lord in the flesh took place in Bethlehem under Augustus in the year 5500. And he suffered in the 33rd year, and 6,000 years must needs be accomplished in order that the Sabbath may come. Julius Africanus wrote this. He says, For why should I speak of the three myriad years of the Phoenicians or the follies of the Chaldeans, their 48 myriads? For the Jews, deriving their origin from them as descendants of Abraham, having been taught a modest mind and one such as becomes men, together with the truth by the spirit of Moses, have handed down to us by their extant Hebrew histories the number of 5,500 years as the period up to the advent of the word of salvation, who is Christ, that was announced to the world in the time of the sway of the Caesars. Theophilus, who died in about 185 AD, wrote in his writing to Autolycus, Book 3, Chapter 28, and from the foundation of the world, the whole time is thus traced. And then he goes into a bunch of different time calculations. He talks about time from the creation to the flood and then to Abraham and all of these different people. And at the end down here, you can see he says, All the years from the creation of the world amount to a total of 5,698 years and the odd months and days. Clement of Alexandria lived from 150 to 215 AD, and in his Stromata, Book 1, Chapter 21, he said this, In all, from Augustus to Commodus are 222 years, and from Adam to the death of Commodus, 5,784 years, 2 months, 12 days. Cyprian of Carthage writes in about 250 AD, in his treatise, Chapter 11, Verse 2, he says, It is an ancient adversary and an old enemy with whom we wage our battle. 6,000 years are now nearly completed since the devil first attacked man. And then again in the same chapter, verse 11, he says, And the first seven days in the divine arrangement containing 7,000 of years. Again, confirming the same chronology. Victorinus of Patau, who died around 303 AD, wrote this in his On the Creation of the World. He says, Wherefore, to those seven days the Lord attributed to each a thousand years, meaning the days of creation, for thus went the warning, In thine eyes, O Lord, a thousand years are as a day. Therefore, in the eyes of the Lord, each thousand years is ordained. For I find that the Lord's eyes are seven. Wherefore, as I have narrated, that the true Sabbath will be here in the seventh millenary of years, when Christ with his elect shall reign. Lactantius, in his Divine Institutes, Book 7, around the year 300 AD, wrote this, Therefore, since all the works of God were completed in six days, the world must continue in its present state through six ages, that is, six thousand years. For the great day of God is limited by a circle of a thousand years, as the prophet shows. Commodianus, in his writings, paragraph 35, in about 250 AD, says, we shall be immortal when 6,000 years are accomplished. Again, looking forward to the 6,000 years. Then in the same writing, in paragraph 80, he says, This has pleased Christ, that the dead should rise again, yea, with their bodies. And those too, whom in this world the fire has burned, when 6,000 years are completed, and the world has come to an end. In around 400 AD, Sulpicius Severus, in his Sacred History Book 1, chapter 2, says this, the world was created by God nearly 6,000 years ago, as we shall set forth in the course of this book, although those who have entered upon and published a calculation of the dates, but little agree among themselves. Methodius of Olympus, who died in 311 AD, wrote this in his Fragments, chapter 9. For a thousand years in thy sight are as but yesterday, seeing that is past as a watch in the night, for when a thousand years are reckoned as one day in the sight of God, and from the creation of the world to his rest is six days, so also to our time 
Six days are defined, the 6,000 years. As, t as those say who are clever arithmeticians, therefore they say that an age of 6,000 years extends from Adam to our time. And then we come to Augustine, one of the later church fathers. In his sermon, 43, paragraph 8, he says, A man makes, as it were, a calculation with himself. Lo, so many years have passed since Adam, and the 6,000 years are being completed. And then immediately, according to the computation of certain expositors, the day of judgment will come. So that's really all of the references I currently have on the 5,500 year prophecy from Adam to Christ. You can see a couple of those works actually show when the prophecy was given to Adam by God. And then uh, many of these ancient pseudepigraphal works confirm the prophecy and speak of it and talk about the reference uh, to the 5,500 years in the measurements of the Ark of the Covenant and things like that. So it was a well-known fact to the Jewish nation all throughout its history. Uh, and then we see the early church fathers recognizing that fact, the Septuagint confirming the timeline and its genealogies. And so we, we get a sense that throughout history that this 5,500 years of time between Adam and Christ was well known by both Jews and Christians, but has somewhat been lost in the modern time due to uh, different corruptions of the the scriptures, specifically the Masoretic text of the Old Testament. Uh, and so we've come to lose that prophecy from our vocabulary, from our understanding in Christianity. Uh, and of course, the Jews lost that because they knew that that prophecy pointed to Christ, and they didn't want that prophecy to point to Christ. That's part of why the corruptions came into the Old Testament texts. Uh, but I hope that this video has given you the uh, references that you may be looking for if you're interested in learning more about the 5,500 years. Uh, it is challenging to find some of these sometimes, so I, I would challenge you if you're interested and you can find more references, please let me know. Uh, I've looked pretty far and wide to find the ones I have, uh, but they are there. It just takes time to search them out. It takes time to read. So uh, with that, thank you for joining me this time, and I appreciate you, and God bless you in your research. Take care.